Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot version 8.1 2018 FDD. So this is the first update that I have gotten uh, in a while, actually. It's been a little bit over a month since I've got an update. I just had my car down to the service center for some other assorted minor issues, and they went ahead and did a firmware update for me. So now we're going through the normal loop, and instead of going through... Actually, I said the normal loop, but we're doing the normal uh, hairpin or S curve right here. But then, as soon as we get through here, we're actually going to go through a slightly different section that's a little bit more challenging, and we're going to start from there from now on. So, we got through that without any problem. Touched the line a little bit. Honestly, touched it probably a little bit less than most human drivers that I see go through that section. And now I'm going to come to a stop at this stoplight. Which is a slow light, so I think I'm going to hang it right here and take a little shortcut that I like to take. Alright. So, nothing significant or noticeable in this version. Um, the only thing that's a little bit weird is when I got the car back from the service center and I clicked on what's new in this update, uh, I actually get a blank screen on this one, which is kind of curious. Not only, oh, there, finally just loaded actually for the first time. But yeah, I, I brought up the release notes. I left them up for like a good several minutes and the screen was just completely blank. Now that they have actually finally loaded for the first time, I am getting a notification that just says, you know, performance and bug fixes, etc. All right. This guy go, and we'll go. He's on the phone, and there's a car coming, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go. All right. So we'll engage on our pod here. Open up to 35. So this is a tricky section because we actually have to cross over a railroad track, uh, and there's some somewhat irregular lane lines that has to deal with a turn lane. Oh, that is sharp. That was nice. Don't pull out in front of me. Let's see how it does. Oh, that's beautiful. So it did a great job of lane keeping there. Uh, it stayed in the correct lane. It didn't have that sort of like indecision judder of trying to figure out which lane it wants to go in. Uh, it's thought about the turn lane there for a second, but then decided against it. All right, so I'm gonna disengage and now I'm gonna hang a right. We'll just wait for these cars to go by. So one thing you may notice that's a little bit different today is I am using a different camera for the instrument cluster. I actually recently got my hands on a GoPro Hero 6, which is a great camera. Uh, it's capable of recording in 4K at 60 frames per second, which is awesome. Good job, Autopilot. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I had to pause there and pay attention to see what Autopilot was going to do when that guy turned in front of me. Um, it's capable of recording at 4K 60 frames per second, or it's actually capable of recording at 1080p. Uh, at 240 frames per second, which is pretty impressive. In fact, it's so impressive that I'm actually having a lot of difficulty getting those videos to play back properly on my computer. Um, but we're trying this out. Uh, it is a significantly wider aspect ratio, so you can actually see the entire instrument cluster. I'm hoping this will give a little bit of a better view. We'll see how that goes. Um, I am also still planning on posting a review of the Blackview DR900S two-channel camera that I'm using for all these videos. Uh, and now that I've got the GoPro, um, I should be able to actually finish that one up here pretty soon. I also recently upgraded my computer, so the video editing is going to go a lot faster than it was before. Previously, to stitch together one of these videos that I would put up on YouTube, it would take, uh, on my old 3770 Intel, roughly about like an hour of video processing time, especially once or once we moved up to 4K. Um, nowadays, I actually just took one of my existing videos, tried to reprocess it just to see how fast it would go, and the, um, the estimate was like five, 10 minutes. It was like nothing compared to what it was before. The new processor that I have is an AMD Threadripper uh, 1920, which is a um, 12 core, 24 thread processor. So yeah, significantly better suited for the purpose. All right, so I am going to I'm manually dropping. I got it. Don't panic. Let's see what the car does. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. I was asking a lot with that one. I understand. <laughs> so now we'll go ahead and hang our left here and go to the same normal section. So haven't noticed anything too significant um, since the previous version, which I think I was running like .24. 
there was one version in between that I did not post a video for. Uh, that one just, it, there was no significant difference that I could discern. So there wasn't really much to talk about on that video. There were no new features or anything. Um, all of the existing features that I've seen, they're still working just as well as they were working before. Um, the off-ramp feature is working pretty well. One minor complaint that I have about it is if you are traveling at highway speed when you take the off-ramp, I think it starts to decelerate a little bit late. I would prefer it to do that a little bit sooner. That could be an issue with the accuracy of the GPS, not being able to figure out the fact that you're on the off-ramp yet, because a little bit of uh, GPS waiver can make it look like you're on a frontage road or an off-ramp when you're actually not. So I'm not sure what they're gonna do with that. The big thing that I'm just waiting on, like everybody else is, I'm now waiting on the, uh, the automatic exit, automatic lane change, and uh, highway interchange feature, which, as promised, oh geez, <laughs> and we have a train, um, which as promised is supposed to be coming at the end of this month. Now, you know, history has probably shown us that what the end of this month really means is like a handful of beta users are going to get their hands on it like August 31st so that, you know, Tesla can technically say, yes, we absolutely did get this out by the end of the month, just like we said we would. And then the rest of us will get it like a month or two later. Um, you know, we'll just have to see what happens, but we're already getting pretty close to the end. And uh, yeah, it's August 25th today. And hasn't really been a lot of news on this. So we'll see how that goes. Now, one other thing that I'll point out here, and I pointed this out in previous videos, and I can't do that loop, is this is technically a local road. Notice that there is no indication for me to do lane change, even though there's clearly another lane off to my left. Um, you also notice that I'm able to set the speed. I can go ahead and crank it up to 90 because there's a car in front of me. I know the car's not going to rocket forward at that speed. Um, it allows me to crank the speed up to whatever I want to. It basically treats it like a highway. So this is one of those like, I don't know how Tesla designates the roads, but there's some sort of designation that's in between what would be classified as a local road and be classified as a highway in as much as it is a local road, like this divided one for instance, <clears throat> that allows you to set the speed limit using auto steer to whatever speed limit you want, but it still recognizes it as a local road, so it does not give you the option of uh, doing an automated lane change. Now it's asking me to apply light pressure, and we saw an instance of this when I was taking that, um, that right turn lane, but there are circumstances in which the autopilot will prompt you to grab the wheel even when it hasn't actually gone through um, any of the other like time-based prompts. It, it's responding to something that it's seeing in the environment that it doesn't feel comfortable navigating itself. And with the, ever since the latest autopilot rewrite and the change of the uh, format of the NAG prompts, that's actually a behavior that I have noticed a lot more with um, these current versions is uh, it'll see something that it, it seems like it freaks out about. It'll just say, hey, please grab the wheel because I don't know what's going on. Um, which is not a bad thing. I mean, obviously, you know, we want the car to be as autonomous as possible, but the car being smart enough to be aware that there is potentially a problematic situation that it doesn't know how to properly deal with, that's that's good. I mean, that's, that's awareness of the car's AI, understanding what's going on around it, which is these are all steps leading towards eventual full self-driving. So I've got no complaint about the fact that it's doing that. Oh, no, no, that's a weird road. For you. That's like a dead end. I can't go that way. Good. Come on, find the lane. Find it easier if we just engage uh, traffic aware cruise control first. And then just wait for the auto steer icon to come on. Yep, good slowdown ahead of the cars. Yeah, autopilot's doing great. Um, yeah, so I'd say that's pretty good for this video, unfortunately. <laughs> Still none of the new features, like uh, no different icons for different types of vehicles, which is cosmetic, doesn't really make that much of a difference, but it was a nice to have. Um, also, no indication that it is reading speed limit signs, um, but I'm going to keep testing on that one, because uh, it is kind of, it's hard to determine, because the, the GPS data can be very accurate in some sections, 
um, and that can give the impression that it might be reading street signs so you just have to find a section of road where basically there is no posted speed limit in the GPS data but there are there is signage for it and then see if it picks it up that's how I that's how I figured that out actually in my old um, AP1 car that I was reading the signs also construction zones uh, temporary speed limit signs that look like not the like weird ones that you might get that don't look like normal speed limit signs like different shape and color but the ones that they post up that do look like normal speed limit signs my AP1 car used to pick up on those which was a very good indication that it was not relying on GPS data um, but yeah so we're just keeping an eye out for the new features and testing out the new camera rig so thanks for watching